Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back. I just finished watching uh, The Real Housewives of Atlanta again. Um, do y'all like this gray? Y'all like it? I think I like it. I think it kind of makes me look a little bit sexy. You know what I'm saying? I think I look like somebody's zaddy. Come on, zaddy. Not perching my lips like that. You can't be nobody's zaddy doing your lips like this. <laughs> I think I like it. I'm trying to see how I... See, because, like, what it is with my hair. Girl, I know. I'll be going, oh, that's what I... I can't never get my black ass on here and just make a video. I got 15 conversations before I even get to the point. But let me just say this. I don't mind gray. Because I have red at the top of my hair, and it's the weirdest thing. I always dye my beard, and I think what it is, because I dyed it the other day, and so the gray is slowly starting to come back in. But right now, it looks even to me. But if I let it go all the way gray, like one side, I think it's this side, is like a whole bunch of gray. And then when I get over here, it's just kind of like a little bit. And I don't like that. I wish it was just kind of like even. Then I think that would be okay. But I'm trying to see how I like it right now it's okay i think just because I, I think because i just got a haircut too so i'm kind of feeling myself a little bit <laughs> you know you know you know you know the girls get their hair cut girl you can't tell a bitch nothing okay um let's go ahead and get into the review y'all because i want to go get me some gumbo um before bb's club girl i got a long girl it's like 11 o'clock bb's on close to three o'clock in the morning so let me stop acting like they about to close in five minutes <laughs> girl nickels will exaggerate anyways all right so hold up okay so eva um you know what's so weird to me sometimes i know that eva is a house wife i know she holds a peach right but sometimes, I, I think, I don't think they've ever really, like, shown her storyline. You see what I'm saying? I think, like, this, maybe because we're, you see what I'm trying to go with this? Like, we know, we know what, we know what Portia's individual storyline is. We know what Kenya's is. Uh, Candy, we know what Cynthia's, Cynthia's is. Nene, she was a friend, she's a friend of the housewife. Um, so she doesn't have one. Um, Tanya, she's a friend of the housewife, Marlo. But I think this is the first time that I can remember that we just really kind of like had an individualized storyline come from Eva. You see what I'm saying? I don't know. Um, but Eva, she is wanting to get her daughter's last name changed. Y'all already know how I feel about last names, um, especially when we give kids last names of niggas who ain't no good i'm gonna say this i'm gonna say this and i'm gonna be done because i we we not even about to do this tonight and then one of the examples I've, I've i gave before was like chloe and tristan thompson like i feel like chloe is a dumb bitch for giving that girl her daughter tristan thompson's last name even though chloe was not innocent in the whole situation when Tristan was with his old baby mama and Chloe came into the picture. We already know how that played out. And she got her karma, right? But this nigga made you go into labor early because he couldn't keep his dick in his pants and he was embarrassing you through these streets. This nigga made you go into labor early and as a reward, you gave your daughter his last name. Bitch, anything could have happened to you on that table. But that's just me. Anyways, but she gives the, um, she changes the daughter's last name to Sterling. Fine, I'm cool with that. Um, I've seen a lot of people online basically saying that Eva was wrong for changing the last name to Sterling and for not keeping the last name, her biological father's, even though her biological father, Kevin McCall, is not in uh, Marley's life, but whatever. Um, Eva calls Candy Salt Bay um, because she's an instigator. Um, Candy is messy. Candy is very much so messy. Um, Candy, Candy is just messy, period. Um, Candy, Portia, Tanya, Tanya, and Marla go to a spa. 
Um, I thought it was weird that they had on makeup and they were putting the mask on their, uh, they were putting the mask on their face with the makeup on. Okay, whatever. Um, they started talking about the table talk. Candy was quiet as hell. Of course, she's going to get all the tea so she can run back and let the other girls know what's going on. Um, let me just say this, and then we're going to get into the whole, what we all want to talk about, right? No. Okay, listen. I don't know if y'all know, but outside in real life, like outside the outside of the show, Candy, Cynthia, and Kenya are actually real friends. Um, Candy is not friends with Tanya. Um, Candy doesn't owe Tanya anything. Um, I'm getting to know you. I could probably inform you of some things. But when it comes down to it, if I have to choose between you and my friend, I'm going to choose my friend. I don't know exactly what y'all were expecting Candy to say at this little spa thing. But what could Candy say? Y'all sitting here mentioning my friend Kenya. And y'all want me to say exactly, like, what do y'all want me to say about my friend? What are y'all expecting, Candy? I'm kind of feeling this great. That's why I keep tilting my head to the side. I'm kind of feeling sexy. I'm feeling sexy. I want to hear you say my name more. Yes, I'm feeling sexy, baby. I heard a couple do wanted to your motherfucking self-esteem, bitch. Um... Anyways, when I get real money, I'm going to have my barber come to my goddamn house because I'm not going out if I don't have to. Anyways, um, bitch, I swear, I think I got ADD. I swear, I think I do. <laughs> I think I got ADHD. I don't know. I just be diagnosing myself with shit, but I don't know because I be all over the place. And I know it and I be trying to stop. Okay, okay here I go. Um... But yeah, okay, Kenya and this whole wig thing. This is the thing. I like Kenya. Y'all already know I like Kenya. It's not a surprise. It's not a secret. Maybe I missed something where Kenya said this, but I don't think Kenya has ever said that she does not wear wigs or weaves. It's kind of obvious when she does have one on. Like, even at the table talk, uh, table talk, even the last night in Toronto, when they were at the table and Marlo mentioned the wig, I knew as soon as Kenya sat down, the bitch had on a wig. I could tell. It was clear as day. Um, At the reunion one year, when she had that short bob, when she had the yellow dress on, and the bob was like a brownish blonde with blonde highlights or something, I knew that had to be a wig or some weave cut into a bob. I don't think Kenya has ever said that she does not wear wigs and weave. I think that Kenya says that when she does wear her real hair, that's her real hair. And it is. Like, I I, I don't know why. And may, I think I probably used to be one of those, one of these people too who think like black girls just don't have real hair. But that's just not true. There are black girls out there with a head full of hair. From Beyonce to Kenya to Nicki Minaj to Taraji P. Henson before she chopped all her shit off. Like, girls have long ass hair. It's just not white girls. So I think it's kind of comical that they all act like Kenya has said that she doesn't wear wigs and weaves and they know that. I mean, what y'all should do is just go ahead and have another uh, no wigs and weave party. Remember, I think it was last year. I saw clips of when they had the no wigs, no. We I think I watched. I think I watched that episode. They had a no wigs, no weave party where everybody had to come with their real hair. Hello, and everybody's hair was still the same length that it was the day that they were born. No tea, no shade. Let's have one this year. <laughs> Let's have one this year and let Miss Kenya Summer Moore prance her black ass through the door. I'm just saying, Kenya has long, full hair, but Kenya wears wigs and weaves. It's never been a secret. It's never been a secret. And maybe y'all can show me a link where Kenya has said, I don't wear wigs and weaves. 
I remember once upon a time, Sheree said that she didn't wear wigs and weaves until she started to wear wigs and weaves. But I don't, I don't, I don't ever remember Kenya saying she doesn't wear wigs and weaves. Um, that tea that Tanya had, girl, Tanya, and see, this is the thing, Tanya. If you felt like Kenya knew some tea about your man, then why don't you just ask Kenya at the table, bitch, do you know something? <laughs> do you know something, bitch? Because I feel like you're talking about me. Why don't you say that? Or why don't you do that? But no, you said, no, I'm going to try to be shady and say I got some tea and that tea was just a Stale as I don't know what girl that was not no tea. Oh, I have a wig. She she wears a wig. Girl, that's all. Of, bitch, I thought you saw some divorce papers or something in that box. You see what I'm saying? Something, something, girl. I don't know, girl. Brooklyn ain't Mark daughter. That's what I thought. I thought you was about to come with some piping hot, destroy a bitch life tea. Like, girl, she wear a wig. Bitch, that's all you got. See, tell you, girl. This is how I know you out of your league, cause girl, this is this is this is what's about to happen. Kenya is about to get off in Tanya's ass. And even they said it. They was like, girl, she coming for your throat. She gonna light your ass up. She gonna put some, and then take, like they out, Marlo said something, Candy, Candy said something, and Portia. They already know how this is about to go down. They know that Kenya is about to get off into Tanya's ass. Tanya, baby, you are out of your league, girl. You might need to go after the girls like Cynthia. You and Cynthia, I don't even think you should fuck with Cynthia. Girl, okay. I just think you need to be a friend and just be that giggly, happy-go-lucky friend and just leave people alone. But you definitely don't want to mess with Kenya. Because so, what's about to happen is Kenya's about to slice your fucking throat off and then everybody going to say Kenya is a bully. Kenya always provo provoking people. Kenya was a Kenya in the wrong. All right. We're going to see how this play out. Um, Portia... Oh. I'm about to go. But I'm about to go. I don't want to talk about Portia. Look. <sighs> Portia and Dennis. All I'm going to say is this, okay? Um... I feel like the only one that really is honest with Portia is Lauren. I feel like she tries to be as honest as possible on camera without telling Portia on camera, leave that nigga alone. Portia was on Watch What Happens Live last, live last night. And a caller called in and was asking her about Dennis and that she trusts Dennis. Bitch couldn't even answer the question. Um, Dennis was out at Waffle House like a week or two ago. It was four o'clock in the morning at Waffle House. He was there with like four other bitches. He could have been out. He could have been at Waffle House with four bona fide lesbians. But even now and then, bitch, you can't trust them, bitch. Because, <laughs> bitch, them hoes will claim they lesbians and go out, go and go go hop on a dick and do a full split and be pregnant. Bitch, you can't even trust the studs, girl, because the studs, they be the main ones talking about they don't fuck with niggas and they walking around here with a baby full of, girl, a gut full of baby, okay? I'm trying to be nice because I feel like I come for Portia and Dennis all the time and I don't want to be that person on YouTube, but I feel like people are not being honest and I feel like I am, <laughs> but don't we all? Listen, let, okay, listen, Dennis, you cheated on your fiance while she was pregnant. You cheated on your fiance again after she had the baby. Because then, because Portia said he cheated on me while I was carrying our child. And then he said he cheated on her because of the postpartum depression. From what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong. I thought you get postpartum depression. Some people do after you have the baby, right? So if that's the case, 
Right, okay. So he done cheated on her twice, we know. Twice, we know. You know that... Your fiance is on one of the most highest rated, probably the highest rated show on Bravo. You know people know Portia. You know Atlanta is not that big. Why in the fuck are you out with M, bitch, besides Portia, or your mama, or Miss Diane? I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say be your ass out with Lauren, okay? <laughs> bitch, don't even be out with Miss Diane. The only two bitches you should be out with at 4 o'clock in the morning is Portia or your mama. That's it. That's it. Why are you out at a Waffle House at 4 o'clock in the morning knowing damn well you in Atlanta, knowing damn well it's nosy motherfuckers with their cell phones out lurking and looking for some shit to send to the blogs? You see what I'm saying? That's how you know these niggas don't care about these women. And y'all steady keep telling these women, just work on your family. Everybody make mistakes. Girl, a mistake is not falling into pussy, okay? A mistake is, oh, baby, I forgot to take, take the chicken out of the freezer. That's a mistake, okay? A mistake is when you go to get some gasoline and you're supposed to get plus and you accidentally, accidentally get regular because you hit the wrong button because you was probably on the phone. That's a mistake. A mistake is when you take the wrong exit and now your ass is late picking up your friend. That's a mistake. You see what I'm saying? Mistakes, a mistake is, oh my God, I didn't see that no towing sign and my car got towed. That could be a mistake. Mistake, you don't, you don't accidentally or make a mistake and sleep with somebody. That just does not happen. Because at the end of the day, you forgot you was in a relationship. No, I didn't forget I was... So, this is how I look at it. Either you forgot you was in a relationship, which is fucked up because you forgot you was in a relationship, or either you thought about your relationship and you still didn't give a fuck. <laughs> I just feel like Dennis should be aware and he should know what's going on. And clearly, Dennis does not give a damn because if he did, he wouldn't be at Waffle House at 4 o'clock in the morning knowing that this show is on at this very moment, which means that Portia is a hot topic. It would be different if maybe the show, the, the reunion, the reunion had just went off and nobody was talking about Real Housewives of Atlanta and maybe the shit would die down. But we are right in the middle of the season and you are still doing fuck shit. I'm going to take it even a step further. I'm just talking now. I feel this. I like. I don't feel. I feel like people who have cheated, they need to be on their p's and q's. They need to be on their p's and q's, making sure they're not doing no fucked up shit. They let you know that Dennis don't care. Just like Curtis from Married to Medicine didn't care. Curtis is ten feet tall. You couldn't tell me, Curtis, your wife is on a one on one of the most popular shows on Bravo, and you thought nobody wasn't gonna notice your big jolly green giant ass walking to the airport with another bitch on your arm. I just feel like certain places people shouldn't be. And this is my, now I'm about to say I'm real old school what I'm about to say probably to a lot of y'all, okay? Like, I don't think people in relationships should be in hotel rooms. There, I said it. <laughs> what? I don't. I just feel like maybe because I have in my head, when I think of hotel rooms, I think of fucking, okay? So... When I think, when I hear like men, I know I'm just rambling now, but when I hear about men being in hotel rooms, why are you in a hotel room? For what? I remember, I think it was like Love and Hip Hop and Princess that got mad because Ray J was in a hotel room with somebody or with his homeboys. And he, I don't think he was doing nothing supposedly. I don't think he was doing anything, but it just looks funny. You in a hotel room with some at a party with some feet? No, I just feel like people should not be in hotel rooms. If you ain't getting your if you ain't getting your back broke in, if you ain't throwing your legs to the moon, if you ain't on your knees to they bloody red, you ain't got no business in a hotel room. Like I said, maybe it's just me because I think about sex when I think about hotel rooms, which I know is ignorant as fuck. But I just don't think people in relationships, unless your man, unless your partner is right there beside you, stay your ass out. Because I just feel like, I know I'm going on a whole tangent. I just feel like, why are you in a hotel room? Why are you in a hotel room and your woman at home? What you doing? What you doing? Why are you in here? Get your ass up out of here. Because even if you're not doing nothing, it just look weird. <laughs> to me, it does. 
Like, Dennis, even if you prop, and I think I heard somebody, I think that he said something like, I can't eat. No, bitch, you can't eat at Waffle House at four o'clock in the morning with four bitches surround. No, you can't. It's food at the house. You got me fucked up if you think that Portia ain't got at least a loaf of bread and some, um, sup chicken salad in that refrigerator in that million dollar house. And if she don't, then baby, go in Waffle House, get your food to go and take your mom, take your bitch something. I'm sorry, let me stop saying bitch. And take Portia some too. That's how that work. But he don't give a damn because Portia ain't going nowhere. Baby, Dennis the made you look like a goddamn fool, Portia. All that money you done got spent. All that money you done spent on your body. And this is the way... I just said I wasn't going to say nothing about Portia and uh, Dennis. Didn't I say that? <laughs> oh, child. Y'all want Portia to be with Dennis, though. Y'all want Portia to be with Dennis. I don't know why. They got a child together. I don't give a damn. Y'all know my favorite line is, fuck them children. Fuck them children. Go fuck them kids. Girl, you got to do what's going to make you happy. And if you if, if you being happy is being with a no good man, then go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. But girl, mama, somebody got to tell you that, bitch, your man got you looking real dumb in these streets. Ain't nobody told you that. Ain't nobody told you that. Anyways, girl, I'm done with Portia and Dennis. Portia, go on, girl. And another thing, girl, I just said I'm done, and now I got one more thing to say. And another thing, too, I think Dennis knows exactly what he's doing. Have you noticed how he always throws that family out there? I'm trying to save my family. That's my wife. First of all, that's not your wife. It's not. That's not your wife. That's your fiance. At one point, it was your girlfriend. At one point, y'all wasn't together no more. That's not your wife. That's not your wife. That's not your wife. Dennis play, do, play on words. I'm trying to save my family. Because he know that those are the type of words that Portia clings on to. When she hears the words like family and wife. Because he knows that's what she strives. That, that's what she wants. You see what I'm saying? So, count how many times, every time Dennis say family, take a motherfucking drink. I'm drinking right now, y'all. Anytime Dennis say family, take a fucking shot. But you'll be fucked up by the end of the show. Anyways. Um, Candy, Cynthia, and Ken, uh, Kenya meet up. Um, Candy lets uh, Kenya know about the whole wig, wig gate. Kenya feels as though uh, Ken, uh, Tanya is trying to come for her and her business. I can get with that, I guess. Um, again, it's it re it really is the truth because when you think of like. You're trying to come from my, you're trying to say that basically you bald headed bitch, you wear wigs. But I actually do wear wigs, but I'm still not bald headed. And that could affect my business because then you're trying to make it seem as though I'm a fraud. When I'm actually not a fraud. All this right here, girl, all this long hair. <laughs> all this right here is mine, bitch. This is homegrown. Hey, get it from my mom. Yeah. Um, I swear to God, y'all, this was my first time taking a, this cup been sitting on this table. I, I poured this cup right before I made this video, and that was my first time taking a sip, so I'm not even drunk at all. Um, I told you I got a natural high. <laughs> y'all don't believe me. Yeah. Just imagine when I do get drunk, how I will talk your fucking ear off. I'll probably get on y'all nerve, honestly. Damn, that motherfucker talk a lot. That's what y'all will say. Damn. I thought he was going to never shut the fuck up. Anyways. Um, Cynthia meets up with Tanya. I forgot all about that scene. Um, at the end of the day, what it comes down to to me is Kenya about to get off in Tanya ass, basically. Basically. Um, I think somebody needs to tell Tanya that Kenya is not what she wants. I think Tanya is doing a good job at being a friend of the housewives. Um, I think it's weird that you have a woman out here on camera, on camera, saying that 
someone's husband tried to hit on them and exchange numbers, which means that eventually he wanted to at least smash and people are mad at Kenya. Um, Tanya doesn't think it's that big of a deal. I think that's foolish as fuck, honestly. It's one thing if somebody said, girl, Paul was flirting with somebody. Okay, flirting is not a big deal to me, whatever. But bitch, he, to ask for somebody's number, what the fuck you gonna do with it? That's a big deal to me. Because what's next? What, you was gonna, what were you going to do with the number? Text her, right? And then do what with... And then when, what were you going to ask her? Out for coffee or for a drink? Okay. Maybe it's just me. Anyways, y'all. I'm about to go. Um, I, there are two new shows that I want to review. Um, because I'm loved in hip-hop. Tapped out. <laughs> I'm a finish Love and Hip Hop New York, but I'm definitely not reviewing Love and Hip Hop New York. God still ain't even made, finished the, the first episode yet. Um, I don't know about Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, so maybe Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, I probably will, because I've always loved, uh, loved Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. But I will finish Love and Hip Hop New York. Um, I'm going to review those. I'm going to have those up hopefully tomorrow. Um, cause I was gonna, I wanted to talk about some things that I saw in last week's episode. Um, and then I wanted to review this week's episode. If that episode is about, if that whole episode is, a, baby, if that episode is about Safari and, uh, what's that bitch name? Uh, Erica. Cause y'all know I'm really not invested in them. I'm not talking about that wedding. Cause I honestly don't give a damn about them all that wedding, honestly. Um, if, if that's an episode, if that's a wedding episode, then maybe y'all can count me out. <laughs> okay. Um... But yeah, there are two new shows. I guess I can tell y'all the title. I wanted to. I want to review Jocelyn's um, Cabaret. I want to review that, and I want to review this show called Chasing Dallas. It's on YouTube. Um, so yeah, just to like switch it up, and cause like I feel like with love, the love and hip hops is like the same thing. It's gonna be the nigga who wanna make the girl a star. It's gonna be. The nigga who got the girlfriend and she insecure because of his doing. You got the one who got shot. You got the one who just trying to make it. Like, all right, y'all. Let me go. Bye, y'all.